Hi everybody and welcome to today's lesson. Normally it's an aula de inglés a través de portugués completa, but today it's in English and maybe this is better for everybody watching. But the topic today is an article related to Brazil, specifically Atafona. Atafona, I think, is a beach area of Brazil and the article from the magazine today is focusing on this particular area of Brazil. So first, hola a todos, normalmente esta aula es totalmente en portugués, mas esta semana seré en inglés con foco en un tópico de artigo de jornal sobre o Brasil. Obrigado e espero que gostem. <laughs> so that is my introduction in Portuguese because normally every week we do a lesson completely through Portuguese but to be honest yesterday I did not have the time to prepare the script in Portuguese because normally it takes two or three hours at least to prepare the lesson so today we speak in English and I hope this will be useful for everybody and benefit everybody as well because we will see lots of vocabulary lots of expressions and it's more relaxed as well because this morning we had the grammar lesson and grammar is very heavy but today it's just focusing on a newspaper article in relation to vocabulary and expressions contact if you want to contact me on social media you can join the instagram page you can join the tiktok account you can join youtube you can join pinterest and finally whatsapp is possible here if you want to contact me and ask any questions in relation to the lessons or english as well so you're very welcome to contact me and to follow me on social media my schedule at the moment is very similar compared to last week every day we have three lessons every day and full of information full of um lessons that hopefully you can learn from and enjoy so i hope you can hopefully watch a couple of them and maybe share the idea with some of your friends as well so this is my schedule and i hope that you can join when you can okay so i think we're more or less ready <coughs> to begin remember everything is free this lesson is completely free and for the public yes you can support me if you want you can make a subscription on my facebook page through the bank or through paypal if you want to support me all the information is on my facebook page and your support is welcome but i am contacting specifically companies and businesses hoping for them to sponsor me and to advertise during my lesson and maybe to finance and to fund my project so i'm looking for a company a business a school a charity an association anybody who wants to support this free project and this will be very important for me and i have contacted some people already so basically i can advertise your company here and explain all about your business during this lesson as well okay let's begin the topic today is about the brazilian town atafona and i think it's very interesting from the content so the story is very curious the story is very good but also we will look at a lot of very important vocabulary and very important expressions in advanced english so let's begin and the title is a rising sea is eaten away this brazilian town okay and the subtitle is the encroaching atlantic ocean is forcing existential losses in atafona a tragedy occurring around the world as climate change accelerates so the first expression is the phrasal verb eat away this is very very interesting because it's used in many different situations especially in the situation of guilt if you feel bad you feel remorse you feel guilt sometimes in your conscience the guilt the bad feeling is eating away at you and destroying you so let me put this comment here because the vocabulary is very good the guilt is eating away at me 
and this means it's destroying me the guilt is destroying me it's making me feel very very bad it's eating away at me and that's very very important so in this sentence it's the same sense as destroy so the rising sea is destroying this town there's another possibility my for example if you spend a lot of money it's possible in english to say it is eating away at my savings in relation to money if something is taking requiring your money it's eating away at your money as well so it's very good quality expression and it's probably considered a phrasal verb to eat away is to destroy and to ruin or demolish your something and again remember the difference between rising and raise this is very important every week the verb is to rise two verbs the first one is very similar to the second but they are different as well for example the first verb is the subject i i rise at eight o'clock i wake up at eight o'clock it's also possible the temperature the temperature subject rises the moon the sun rises the price rises but the second verb is typically the person i raise a subject i raise a question i raise an objection i raise a child so basically these two verbs are very important in english and there's a little difference between the two that's necessary to understand okay <clears throat> the verb to encroach is very difficult as well and it's related to space you have your private space and your friend is encroaching on your space and it means similar to invading okay so to encroach and to invade are very interesting uh, synonyms and I would suggest they are very close in terms of the significance so to encroach on your space is to invade your space or to occupy your space in a negative sense in a negative way so in this situation the Atlantic Ocean is invading the space and is forcing uh, losses so the verb is very important the verb is to lose you can lose time you can lose money you can lose your telephone you can lose your patience and the past is lost and the noun is a loss so it's a very important verb because of the different forms <clears throat> the verb is to lose the past is lost and the noun is a loss so it's really really important so in this situation it's the noun in the plural losses we have many expressions connected to losses we can say to cut your losses this is typical in a project when you are losing money you lose lose money every day you're losing you're losing and eventually you cut your losses and you stop the project because you're losing money all the time and more advanced lose money hand over fist is another very advanced expression and this means you're losing money constantly hand over fist i think it just represents movement so you're losing a lot of money you're losing money hand over fist as well so of course the verb to lose is very flexible and very important in many different situations in english and that is the verb to lose okay next we continue to the next paragraph and you can see the picture here is very dramatic and the description of the picture is at the phone a residence play in the ruins of the town so this is important because the verb is to ruin <coughs> and the significance is similar to destroy but the ruins are the objects like the debris that's another difficult word in english the ruins 
represent the object that is destroyed after you destroy you have the ruins the ruins of a castle the ruins of a building the debris or the rubble these are different synonyms to represent the same idea when the building is destroyed you have the ruins you have the debris and you have the rubble as well in this situation the ocean is destroying eating away ruining the town and only you have the stone the rubble the debris remaining okay so it's very important vocabulary in the town which has lost 14 blocks so of the buildings of apartments you lose the building for the rising sea and eroding sands so this is another very important verb the verb is to erode and it's very specific for geography and for the river the river erodes the land because of the constant pressure it erodes 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 and you can also erode your confidence so if your confidence is reduce 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 it erodes your confidence as well so it's a very interesting advanced verb in english and in this situation the sand is disappearing because it's eroding okay tide at low tide buildings that were taken by the sea decades ago so this is interesting and let me try to use my pen yes okay so tide is the most important word here at low tide the tide is the word we use for the ocean when the water is coming in and the water goes out this is the tide so we say the tide is in and the tide is out in relation to water and the ocean so low tide i think is when the water is coming in i think but so there's two expressions low tide and high tide but we have more contexts with the verb tide we say to change the tide and this means to change the momentum change the momentum for example in a sports match one team is dominating the other team and you want to change the tide you want the other team to dominate the first team so to change the tide is to change the momentum and this is possible especially in sports as well there's a very very proficient very difficult expression to tide me over and this means to have sufficient uh, product or quantity until the next moment so for example there is a storm in your city a big storm a dramatic storm and it's impossible for you to go to the shop but you have in your house you have sufficient quantity of products of food to tide you over to survive until it's possible to go to the shop again so that's very proficient english to tide me over to tide you over to tide him to tide anybody over means to have sufficient quantity to survive okay also there's a very famous expression good tidings and this is like good wishes good um hopes i wish you well good feelings good tidings i bring and this means good feelings good gifts good presents and it's very proficient english as well in this sense so very good quality vocabulary buildings that were taken by the sea this is a very interesting grammatical structure because the verb is to take it's irregular in the past took take took the participle is taken and in this case we also see the verb to be in the past were taken so this is an example of the formula the verb to be plus the participle this is the formula for the passive voice very interesting very important so this is the passive voice so the buildings were taken by the sea the active the sea took the buildings 
and that's always very important to understand the idea of the active voice and the passive voice in English. Decades ago, so decades is 10 years in singular, 10 years, but decades is maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. Emerge, very important verb, it's to appear. If something emerges, the significance is something appears. And in this situation, the buildings start to emerge, start to appear from the sand. So really good quality and very interesting vocabulary, the verb to emerge. And it's very flexible because also in sport, in relation to talent and people with ability, these people start to emerge. They start to appear and become dominant and become strong as well. So that is the first subtitle and the journalist here is Cao Barretta Briso and the photographs were by Felipe Fittipaldi. Okay, let's continue. It is high tide and the waves are getting closer to the ocean front, home where Jose Nenu Rosa lives. He gets up from his lunch of sergeant fish, which he caught at dawn. Barefoot and shirtless, his skin tanned from 46 years under the sun, the fisherman checks the stability of a four foot tall rock wall surrounding his house that protects it from the turbulent Atlantic Ocean. So three very important sentences. And again, previously we saw low tide, but high tide is different. And I think in this case, high tide is when the water is coming to your area. So we have explained that word tide. Here we have the waves specifically in the ocean. Of course, we have a lot of waves, but of course the verb to wave is very flexible because it's this action to wave. And in the ocean with the water, you have a wave. And this is very, very specific for the ocean. It's possible in a swimming pool, you have a wave machine. This is the special machine that produces the waves. And it's very, it's amazing to use a wave machine. And of course, with pressure, you can say waves of pressure, and this means a lot of pressure again and again, waves of pressure as well. So it's very, very flexible. Getting closer, the verb to get has many different significances. It could be to obtain, to get information, to obtain information. The second significance is to become, to get tired, to become tired, to get hungry, become hungry. Third significance is to reach or to arrive, to get home, to get to the hotel, to arrive or to reach home. Okay, in this situation, it's becoming, getting closer, becoming closer to the ocean front. The, well, here it's the adjective, and basically it's for the noun, the home. <clears throat> and if it's an ocean front home, the home is at the border of the ocean, the front of the ocean. So in this case, it's just an adjective. Where, <coughs> grammatically, where is a relative pronoun, which, that, who, whose, where, when, they are relative pronouns. Therefore, where is the substitution for the home. So this is a subject of the sentence. And Jose Nenu lives. It's the third person because the verb is to live. I live in Ireland. You live in England. You live in Spain. You live in Brazil. That's the verb, but the third person is lives. He lives, she lives. Okay, next sentence. Subject, he, Jose, he gets up. This is very important, and the significance is to leave your bed in the morning. Because we, in English, can say wake up and get up. What is the difference between to wake up and to get up, there is a very important difference. To wake up is the moment your eyes open. So you wake up at eight o'clock, you wake up, 
but you get up physically from bed at nine o'clock so there's a big difference between wake up and get up <clears throat> and in this situation he leaves his bed he physically leaves his bed from his lunch but in this case it's not bed it's lunch because he's eating and then he gets up he stands up he leaves the table sergeant fish i have no idea but obviously it's a type of fish we have many types of fish salmon cod trout tuna but in this case it's a sergeant fish i don't know what is a sergeant fish but it's obviously a particular type of fish which again this is a relative pronoun and which is here the substitution my pen is not working i don't know why okay so the key word here is which and which is the relative pronoun and substituting for the fish he is the subject and the verb is to catch a very important verb to catch you catch a bus you catch a train you catch a taxi you catch a flu but in this situation it's the past irregular catch and caught so the pronunciation is very important caught catch caught and the participle also is caught next we have a very important word in english and it's the word dawn okay and dawn is the word we use to describe the start of the day so it's very important dawn is the start of the day okay but it's also a verb and we have a very famous expression to dawn on me very advanced in Spanish, I think it's Alba. That, I think it's Alba, the beginning of the day. Okay, so it's the dawn of the day. Um, the opposite is dusk. Evening, night. So the evening is the dusk and the dawn is the morning. And the verb to dawn on me is when something suddenly... Uh, something suddenly you you realize basically the verb to realize to understand something finally for example i am thinking i am thinking i am thinking and then finally ah it dawns on me i realize i understand the situation something is dawning on me so that's very very important and it's a typical expression the dawn of the day and another very important expression is to wake up at the crack of dawn okay so to wake up at the crack of dawn means that you wake up at the first moment the sun appears at maybe six o'clock in the morning that's the crack because you see a little piece of sun and you wake up at the first moment of the morning you wake up at the crack of dawn as well so it's very very interesting vocabulary and very important to wake up at the crack of dawn in this case he catches the fish in the past he caught the fish at the first time in the morning at dawn so really good quality vocabulary barefoot and shirtless bare means naked so for example my wall my wall is bare there is no decoration no paintings no pictures my wall is bare it's empty it's naked okay so bare means naked nude and bare hands means no protection no gloves just my bare hands only my skin my bare hands it's possible also the bare minimum if you have the bare minimum this means you have the only the basics okay so the bare minimum is very very important and this means you only have the absolute minimum the absolute basics and as i said barefoot means you have no protection on your feet so we say one foot and two feet so if you are barefoot 
this means you have no socks, no shoes, no protection. You are barefoot. And the same, we say bare hands. And this means you have no protection for your hands as well. So it's really good English and really good quality. In fact, we have an adverb that's very difficult. And it's possible to say barely any time, barely any money. And it means hardly, almost no. So barely any time, barely any money, almost no time, almost no money, hardly any money. So it's all connected. And finally, we can say the bare bones. <laughs> this is typical when you speak about a team or a number, a quantity of your team. For example, your football team normally have 15 players in the squad. In the group, you have 15 or 20 players normally for training. But on the match day, you only have the bare bones. You only have 11 players, the minimum. You have no extra substitutes. You just have the bare bones because obviously it's a metaphor for the body. No muscle, no skin, only the bones, the minimum. Okay, so obviously it's very important and it's a very typical expression in English. So barefoot with no protection, no socks, no shoes, barefoot and shirtless without a shirt. So the bare body means no clothes, naked or nude. So let me write that as well, bare body means naked or nude and this is exactly the case here the person has no shirt and you can see the body and the skin his skin tanned very very important vocabulary and in spanish i think you say bronziar bronziar something like that so the verb in english is to tan and this is exactly the process when it's very hot the sun is very hot the temperature is very high and your skin changes color from white to maybe red to brown so that is a tan and it's a verb to tan and the noun is a tan we also have a tan line and a tan line is specifically part of the body that one part has the tan and the other part has no tan. That's the tan line. It's very famous that a lot of people have a tan line as well. So in this situation, his skin is brown because of the regular exposure to the sun. Okay, 46 years in the sun, his body is tanned. The fisherman, the man who is responsible for catching the fish checks checks the stability of a four foot tall so i can see my camera is flashing but give me one moment and i fix my camera because it's flashing and i try to fix it so this should be better okay in this situation we see three different words four foot tall and the two hyphens okay when you have the hyphen in english the function of the hyphen is to combine the words so now four foot tall is one adjective one word okay tall is related to the size the building is very tall the boy is very tall like high very similar to high and foot is a measurement Typically for meters, I am maybe one meter six, one meter seven, but also in Ireland, we have a different measurement for height. We say five foot 10, five foot nine. So my height is five foot nine, five foot 10. And that's very important to remember. In this situation, it's a description. It's an adjective for the rock wall surrounding his house that protects it from the turbulent so protect is typical with the preposition from protect you from protect him from it's a very typical combination to protect somebody from and the adjective here is turbulent 
if the ocean is very turbulent, it's very chaotic, very crazy. Your life is turbulent, your life is chaotic, your life is crazy. In the aeroplane, we have turbulence. The difference between the adjective and the noun. The adjective is turbulent, which means chaotic, crazy. The noun is turbulence. And turbulence is very common in the aeroplane when the aeroplane is moving because of the wind, because of the storm, the aeroplane has turbulence. So it's a very interesting word. The adjective is turbulent and the noun is turbulence. Okay, so that is the noun form of the adjective. Next, a very interesting sentence. He sighs in relief to see that his property is safe at least for another day. So the subject is he. The verb is very, very specific. The verb is to sigh. Very specific verb. The significance is when you are frustrated and you release the respiration. <sighs> That's to sigh because you are frustrated and you need to release the frustration. In this situation, it's the noun relief. This is related to the verb to relieve, like to alleviate. To relieve has the significance to alleviate, and the noun is relief. Okay, so if you sigh in relief, you feel alleviated, and the pressure is disappearing. <sighs> and you're happy, you're okay, you're content because the pressure has disappeared. You sigh in relief to see that his property is secure, his property is safe, his property is okay. Also, we can say safe as a house. This is a typical expression to represent that something is completely secure. Safe as a house, completely secure. And um, we also have an expression in English, we say in safe hands. And this means in safe management, in safe control. And you can be content because something is in safe hands, safe management. Okay, so it's very, very important. At least is typical for the minimum. At least one hour, at least 20 minutes, at least 10 people. The minimum, at least a very good combination, very simple, but very good quality as well. Next, the difference in English between another and other. What is the difference between another and other? Another is typical for singular. Another day, another week, another person, another biscuit. That's for singular, but other is for plural. Other people, other days, other weeks, other years, etc., etc. So there's a big difference in English between another and other. So other is for plural and another is for singular. Very interesting. And lots of people make the error here. So be very careful and conscious and aware of this rule. In this case, it's singular another day. Okay, let's continue to the next paragraph. But if you have a question, please put your question in the Facebook chat. Please put your comment in the Facebook chat and I can check your comment here in the Facebook chat. So thank you so much for your comments and um, I'm just going to open the window to respond and to reply to your window to your comments here. So give me one moment and I put the comment here. So thank you very much for your questions. Thank you for your comments and if you have a specific question please ask the specific question as well. So Sandra, thank you so much. Good morning. And exactly, taking sun all day. It's typical in, I think, South America. So I'll just write the comment here. Hello, everybody. And thank you. Okay, let's continue. In this paragraph, again, I continue reading for pronunciation and also focus on the important vocabulary, the important expressions in this 
paragraph. In the afternoon, strong gusts from the northeast blow up nine foot waves. Very, very important. That touch Nenu's wall. His five dogs bark, frightened, while the three cats hide on the roof. Nenu climbs the barrier, partially collapsed by a storm about a year ago, and points to the bottom of the sea at the remains of the house where he and his seven fishermen brothers were born. Okay, very interesting. It was taken by the ocean 30 years ago, he says, as well as two other of his residences in the years that follow. Very interesting. We have five or six very important lessons from this particular paragraph. First, a gust. Strong is the adjective. That's very easy, strong. But a gust is the noun and it's related to wind. Wind, that's very strong, is a gust. So it's very typical in English. A gust of wind has the significance a very strong, powerful wind. Okay, so it's really good quality vocabulary and very important. So basically the significance here is strong wind. From the northeast, blow. The significance of blow is very important and very flexible in English. The basic significance is this action. When you blow, something is very hot. The food is very hot and you need to blow. Of course, we have lots of contexts with the verb to blow. It's possible to blow up. And this means to explode. Okay, to blow up, to explode. But it's also possible to fill with air. For example, if you blow up a balloon, you make the balloon bigger. El globo, in Espanol, globo. You blow up the balloon, you inflate. Okay, so in this situation, the significance is to inflate. But also, it's possible to explode. Also, if you blow up a story, that's very important with the significance that you exaggerate the story. You make the story more dramatic. But in reality, the story is very simple. The story is very easy. But you blow up the story. You exaggerate the story. To blow, there's lots of possible connections. For example, we have blowback. And blow back is very specific, related to a fire. When the building is on fire and you need to enter the building, you break the window and there's a reaction that's a blow back. So there's lots of possible significance and contexts with English related to the verb blow. To blow dry your hair is the specific machine to dry your hair, to blow dry your hair. So there's lots of possible connections with the verb to blow. And in this situation, it's to make bigger. And remember, the adjective is nine foot. Foot is a measurement. My height is five foot nine inches. So nine foot is very, very high. So the wave with the water is very high. It's nine foot waves. That touch the wall of the house of Nenu. This is possession. Nenu's wall. The wall is the possession of Nenu. The dog is the subject and the verb is to bark. The noise the dog makes is to bark. Woof, woof. That's the typical verb to bark. In English, we have an expression related to bark. We say her bark is worse than her bite. So that's a very, very famous expression, first related to a dog. So the bark of the dog is more dramatic, it's more powerful 
compared to the bite because people are afraid of the dog that barks but in reality the dog is not dangerous so this is a metaphor for a person the person who speaks speaks is very loud intimidating but in reality there's no danger so the person's bark is worse than the bite very very famous next we have the adjective frightened and frightened is the same as scared so the pronunciation is important frightened and scared the verb is to frighten and the verb is to scare similar to terrify if the dog frightens you the dog scares you the dog terrifies you in this situation it's the adjective frightened while three cats hide the verb to hide is to disappear to hide you hide so it's very important as well on the roof the preposition is very important because the preposition on is for surface on the wall on the television on my body on because it's a surface and the roof is a surface as well you have the building and you have the roof on the roof okay so nenu climbs this action to climb it's the third person so we have the s i climb you climb he climbs with the s nenu climbs with the s third person the barrier partially collapsed so the barrier is collapsed a little in a part not completely just a little the barrier is collapsed in parts okay because of due to debido a in espanol debido a by a storm about a year ago and point two preposition point two the bottom of the sea at the remains do you remember at the beginning of the lesson we say the remains the ruins the debris the rubble very difficult vocabulary but the remains is the part of the building after destroy so that is the remains where he and his seven fishermen brothers were born this is very very important because in english the participle is born but it's necessary with the verb to be for example i was born I, i'll write this sentence i was born in 1986 <laughs> okay so it's necessary the verb to be always it's necessary the verb to be plus born the mistake i born in 1986 no no this is the mistake this is the big big mistake no <laughs> so it's necessary the verb to be born always 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 for example the baby will be born today okay so the baby will be the verb to be in the future born today and in this situation it's exactly the same the verb to be in the plural in the past born it was taken so the subject it is related to the house the house was taken this is an example of the passive voice remember my explanation for the active and the passive it's very common in english so the house was taken by the ocean this is the passive voice the alternative way to write this sentence is the act of the ocean took the house therefore the house was taken by the ocean very very important grammar lesson the difference between the active voice and the passive voice so let me write this as well so the ocean took the house this is the active and the passive is the house was taken by the ocean and this is an example of the passive voice 
Okay, so that's really interesting because it's necessary to change the position of the subject and the object, the house, and it's also necessary to introduce an auxiliary, an extra verb to be, plus the participle of the verb was taken. And that is a perfect example of the passive voice in English grammar. As well as, this has the significance also, as well as two other of his residences, his homes, two more of his places, his locations for his home, two other buildings in the years that followed. Great, okay, that paragraph is not too difficult. There's two or three important expressions and very good questions. Do you have any questions? Um, perfect, thank you, Sandra. Have a great day and I hope you have a great day also. Let's continue with the next paragraph. So this is the picture of Atafona in Brazil and it's on the coast of Brazil and it's a street in Atafona buried by sand. So you can see this is a street and it's destroyed since the 1960s, 14 blocks have been lost to the sea. So the sea is destroying and ruining the buildings and the location. Okay, last paragraph. And again, another picture here. You can see the fish and the dog and the man here on the street as well. So Jose Luis Rosa is a fisherman and resident of Atafona Beach. Jose has lost three houses over the last few years because of the waves. Okay. Last paragraph. This time he decided to fight back using the money he earned through fishing and making nets. Nenu spent $3,000 on the rocks that he hopes will save his house, though he knows that the solution is eph eph ephemeral. Mm, ephemeral. So my pronunciation is difficult for this word. The sea isn't wrong. It wants what belongs to him back, says Nenu. It will swallow everything, but I resist. Okay, the subject, he. <coughs> subject, he. The verb to decide in the past is decided, past simple. He decided to fight back. Has the significance to respond. To fight back means to respond you are in difficult situation, but you fight back, okay? Using the money you earned, you earn money, you earn your salary. This is very important because it's not win, it's earn. You win a competition, but you earn money, okay? So let me show you the example here to win a competition, but to earn money, big, big difference, big difference. And people make this error frequently. So you earn money, you earn a salary, you earn respect, you earn a reputation. Sorry, reputation. So that's very, very important in English. You earn money, you earn a salary, you earn respect, and you earn a reputation. But you win a competition, you win a prize, you win a match, you win a game. So you can see the difference is very important. And in this situation, it's money, specifically money. He earned from work through fishing and making nets. So he making the nets for fishing. Spend in the present with the D for Dorothy, for Dublin. Spend is irregular in the past. Spent. Okay. It's possible in English, I am spent, and this means very, very tired. You are spent, you are exhausted, you are completely tired, you are spent. That's a possible adjective in this sense as well. However, here it's the past simple, he spent the money on. is very typical, the verb to spend is very typical with the preposition on. Spend money on your friend, spend money on your partner. You give the money, you give the present to your partner, okay? 
in this situation the money was spent on the rocks and he hopes will save will rescue his house okay to save it's possible to save money to save time to save energy to save light so it's a really important verb to save let me show you a couple of examples to save money to save time to save energy to save a person is to rescue so this is very different saving money is you keep money save time is to cut the time save energy is to preserve energy but to save a person is to rescue so it's a little different and in this situation it's salvage rescue salvaje rescue his house though however but he knows that the solution is ephemeral and i think ephemeral is temporary okay Eph ephemeral the pronunciation is difficult but i think the significance is temporary the c is not wrong the c it once what this is a relative pronoun again and the verb to belong is possession this telephone belongs to me it's my possession i own the telephone it will swallow very very important verb when you drink water you swallow the action is to swallow when you drink you swallow and this is a very important word in english we have a couple of informal expressions to swallow a brick is very informal the brick is ladrillo in espanol in the building you have a brick and basically the significance is a gullible person a person who believes everything so the person is very gullible the person believes every single thing you tell them and the person swallows a brick the person believes everything very innocent person okay great so i think that's sufficient for today that's a very good lesson dedicated to vocabulary dedicated to grammar dedicated to expressions at fluent advanced english level the topic is atafona in brazil and the story is very interesting about atafona in brazil and the water and the ocean and the town so for me it's very enjoyable it's very interesting and i think it's full of very good vocabulary as well thank you for your time thank you for watching thank you for watching live thank you for watching recorded and i hope you enjoy the lesson have you any questions if you have any questions please put your comments here in the text and mary wow thank you so much for your comments so you're from brazil and it's happening in the city next to yours that's amazing so it's incredible and i have never heard about this story before but obviously in brazil it's happening in all the time that's amazing and um so thank you mary for your comment and for your story and sandra thank you so much and that's very interesting so thank you for your comment and i hope everybody is enjoying that comment as well so thank you very much mary bonini and you can see the picture here from atafona great if you have a question if you have a comment please leave your comment if you want to contact me on instagram social media you're welcome to contact me on instagram tiktok youtube pinterest and whatsapp as well if you have any questions my schedule is the same this week this is my schedule more or less so today <clears throat> at 11 45 in 30 minutes i have a lesson focusing on correcting people's writing and this is interesting as well so you're welcome to join me today at 11 45 as well great thank you so much i hope that you have a very good day and thank you very much sandra i appreciate your comment and hopefully you have a good day and thank you so much for watching the lessons and for participating as well it's fantastic thank you have a great day and hopefully talk to you soon bye bye